for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. We are joined on the show today to talk about businesses getting back to business by our city manager from Rancho Palos Verdes, Ara Moranian, and of course, the CEO of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Eileen Hupp. Thank you both, first of all, for being here today. Um, I know there's been so many questions going on about businesses reopening in the wake of COVID-19, but I know the city of Rancho Palos Verdes has been working with, with many cities on the peninsula. And Ara, I know that you spent a lot of time talking with them and working together to really get things moving. And Eileen, the same for you. Yeah. You have really got the pulse of the businesses. I know that you work with them and talk to them every single day. So Eileen, let's start with you. And I really okay. want to talk about your blueprint for business that you've been working so hard to put together. Tell us about that. Okay, thank you, Maria, and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Mm -hmm. um, the Blueprint for Business is a document that the Chamber has been working on for several weeks now. Um, we have been talking with a number of businesses. We started by identifying different sectors, which are how businesses, uh, businesses that operate in a similar fashion, retail, restaurant, hospitality, entertainment, things like that. And we've been talking to businesses in each of those sectors and trying to help them pull together a blueprint for the things that they need to be thinking about and planning for now as they reopen. Um, and we wanted to also provide them with the resources. So we have a lot of information in this blueprint that talks about the CDC guidelines and the LA County Department of Public Health guidelines. Um, idea being is that as businesses start to reopen, we don't want to leave businesses on their own to figure it out. So this gives them the tools and the resources that they can begin to use right now to start planning and implementing their opening. Um, when we saw you know, the whole safe at home orders come down back on March 18th, those businesses that were allowed to stay open at that point in time were scrambling to figure out what they could do and how they could do it and where could they get masks and all those kinds of things. So we've tried to pull that together as a tool for businesses across the peninsula to use. Um, we also felt in putting this together that this would help assure our local cities that the business community has a plan we know what we're doing, we are organized, it is well thought out to give our cities a greater level of comfort that businesses are ready to open and to do it in a manner that is safe for their employees as well as for their customers. So that was kind of a second part of it as well. Um, and then also we want to make sure that our community feels that businesses are ready to reopen and again to keep their safety um, foremost as well. The document called the Blueprint for Business has been presented to um, the three cities on the peninsula that, um, uh, that have commercial districts and uh, we're hoping that they will incorporate it into their plan. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes has been so proactive and so business friendly in working with the chamber and our businesses to try to help us put this together. Their feedback and input on this plan has been incredibly helpful. And so the chamber's goal is that if the chamber and the cities can work together on this plan, we can get our businesses open sooner. Um, notwithstanding that there will be many of our residents who aren't feeling comfortable to go to businesses and that's okay, they can stay home and we're encouraging our businesses no matter what, even when they can reopen, keep those takeout and delivery options and online options you know, readily, readily available for people who may not want to venture out of their homes as soon as others might. And, and Maria, um, first yeah. off, thank you uh, for including me on this. And, and, and I just want to add, you know, we've, the Rancho Palos Verdes has worked very closely with, mm -hmm. with Eileen and the chamber. And, yeah. you know, as the city has uh, started working on, on developing a reopening plan, mm -hmm. the, our plan had three components to it. It, it dealt with uh, City Hall and its facilities and, um, the, the city parks and its open space areas, and we wanted to include businesses. And so we relied very heavily on the Chamber's blueprint. I was just gonna ask you, for both of you, how helpful it's been to have each other to work through this. Very helpful. Very I mean, helpful, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you uh, from, from my perspective, and, and I think Eileen will, will share mm -hmm. the same thoughts here, but mm -hmm. when, when, from the city's perspective, when, when our business community is hurting, the city's hurting. So we, we feel the pain. And so when all this went down, 
we were very sensitive to, mm -hmm. to our business owners and we're, we're trying to identify ways that the city can reach out and help our businesses. And so mm -hmm. we worked very closely with Eileen from the very beginning back in March, like how, yeah. what can we do? How can we, mm -hmm. how can we help? What resources can we provide as a city to, to keep our businesses afloat? Mm -hmm. We didn't want to see our businesses who are, or who are being asked to, to shut down by the county orders that they end up being boarded up and then we, we deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want to do that. So I think the, the council very early on, we're yeah. looking at ways that the mm -hmm. city can help our businesses. And Eileen and, and the chamber have been mm -hmm. instrumental in that. No, thank you. I would echo absolutely what Ara said. And I think to add to that, I mean, the chamber is uniquely positioned because we cover all four cities. And so we can represent businesses across the peninsula. And um, that is, that's, I think is strengthens our ability to be able to help all the cities and work with the cities because again when our residents go shopping they're going to they're going to Ralph's because it's Ralph's they're not necessarily paying attention to what city it's in so we really the chamber really has a great role to play there in terms of bringing everyone together um, but we also very much we appreciate the cities particularly RPVs you know willingness to collaborate and work with us I mean it has just been phenomenal it's just it's and, and and the blueprint that the the chamber prepared. So we we folded that into our uh, roadmap uh, to reopening. And mm -hmm. what we've done is we actually submitted our plan to Supervisor Han's office mm -hmm. for for her consideration to consult with with Dr. Ferrer, mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. county's yeah. Uh, yeah. director of public health, to give us some input and see. Um, if, if our plan is acceptable from the, the county's perspective so that we can try to start implementing components of it. So that was really important. Yes. And, and I know there's so many moving parts, but I know the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, um, Ari, you've been to many local restaurants that are mm -hmm. you're working with to help out the first responders um, to deliver them lunches and dinners. Tell us about that. Uh, it, it's a great program. And so, like mm -hmm. I said, you know, early on, the council was like, okay, what can we do to yeah. help our businesses, yeah. especially the restaurants that have had to mm -hmm. shut down or, or significantly reduce or modify their operations. So we, we identified that we had a funding source and we thought, okay, what a great gesture it would be to express our gratitude to mm -hmm. our, our frontline workers and, and our first responders and help our businesses. So we, we developed this program where we are the cities and in each council members involved in this, where they're actually um, uh, nominating a business for us mm -hmm. to buy lunch from a restaurant and then we buy we buy lunch or dinner and mm -hmm. then we we donate it to um, our, our frontline workers and our first mm -hmm. responders we've 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 provided lunch to um, the hospital workers at UCLA Harbor or mm -hmm. Harbor UCLA excuse me and then Torrance Memorial mm -hmm. today I, I spent uh, a couple hours with with Councilman Dida and we went to um, all, uh, we went to three fire stations on the, nice. on the peninsula. We went mm -hmm. to station 53, mm -hmm. uh, 83, and 106. Mm -hmm. And we bought lunch from oh. a restaurant on Western Avenue uh, called uh, Bird Talk Chicken, yeah. which um, is a great, great restaurant. I, I'm going to promote it to, to all mm -hmm. of you out there. Yeah. Um, we've also, we were able to uh, support uh, mm -hmm. Avenue Italy, uh, Subway, we're looking at Yellow Vase, and some of the mm -hmm. other restaurants um, in Rancho Palos Verdes. So I think it's a great, great program. Uh, the, the, the recipients of these meals are so appreciative and, and it's mm -hmm. so moving. When we've gone to the hospitals, the, the nurses and, and uh, the medical practitioners are just, mm -hmm. just overwhelmingly yeah. touched by the gestures that they're getting from the community. So. Well, and Ara, I was going to mention that because you're not just sending them, you are going over there. So, yeah. I mean, that must be so overwhelming and amazing mm -hmm. all at the same it, time. It is so moving. Yeah. And I know, because I've gone with, with individual council members and mm -hmm. they've all, they're all participating in this. And so, and, and we're doing everything in order to, um, practice social distancing and, and put those safeguards in place so we, we're, we're protected and mm -hmm. it, it is the most moving 
mm-hmm. feeling that you, you, it's so hard to explain, but when you're out there and you're doing that and you're actually saying thank you to these mm-hmm. heroes who are out there, okay. um, it, it's great. And we're using this as, as a way to just uh, promote our hashtag mm-hmm. RPV together. That, that's mm-hmm. a campaign, a social media campaign that mm-hmm. the city launched a couple weeks ago. And, and the whole point behind that campaign is, is to just rally our community together and, mm-hmm. and share um, videos and, and comments and quotes on how you've been dealing with the stay at home mm-hmm. orders and, and, and to express your gratitude to those that are, that are out there helping you uh, maintain some sort of a, some form of normalcy. Mm-hmm. You know, and I kind of want to bring that up as well. You know, the website, the rpvca.gov, mm-hmm. so much amazing information, especially to help seniors. I mean, yes. you know, mm-hmm. they're really the most at risk, so they stay home, but you've got people delivering the groceries and helping them out, bringing them food, and mm-hmm. that has been an amazing resource, RF. It, it, it's an incredible mm-hmm. resource, and and it's a collaborative effort that mm-hmm. that involves all four cities on the peninsula, the mm-hmm. chamber. We've done, we've all worked together, and and the school district. You know, Linda mm-hmm. Reed, she, and we've talked about this in the past. She started a whole volunteer program where not only did she she seek out uh, volunteers, but those who need um, mm-hmm. volunteers, and she bridged those two. Um, groups together and you know the demographics on on the peninsula we do mm-hmm. have a lot of seniors and and when you have that type of pro it really shows you what type of community we live mm-hmm. in and, and right. so and it just it just underscores the hashtag rpv together yeah that's right we're gonna keep pushing that yeah, yeah. No, absolutely <laughs> and, and eileen when you talk to some of the businesses what are the biggest challenges that they tell you about they just want to reopen <laughs> they just want to reopen. They yeah. just want to reopen. When you think about it, the protocols that are in place that allow us to go into Trader Joe's and walk around and get our groceries should be easily transferable to pretty other- much every other retail. So um, again, realizing that some people, just because something is open doesn't mean you have to go, but but the businesses are, are very... Um, they're very resilient in that many of them have created and come up with um, new ways to reach their customers and new ways to serve their customers. So there's a lot of those kind of great stories out there, but there is an equal amount of, um, of concern and uh, desperation and not knowing when they'll be able to reopen. And, you know, they want to, I mean, they're worried about their employees and all that. So, so you're really hearing both. Um, they just want to know, when they can reopen that is the number one question um yeah, yeah. And, and and the city keeps you know yeah. we're getting the same question when yeah. can i reopen and we yeah. all want our businesses to reopen we know what that means um mm-hmm. in, in the bigger uh picture yeah. Yeah. So. well and i think some of it some of the things that we don't think about all the time are things like you know now we're walking in and there are hand sanitizers we can use the lucite plastic up so that you're safe from the mm-hmm. person that you're interacting with. Um, things like that, that we're actually going to talk about in the next segment. We've got mm-hmm. a lovely lady who's going to come on and tell us how stores and businesses can actually get mm-hmm. a hold of those things so they can implement them in their businesses because there's going to be so many things. I think we're in a new world. We're wearing masks, mm-hmm. some plastic gloves, things that we need to feel safer so that when Mm -hmm. we go back into the businesses, I mean, even when I go to the grocery store, I'm, I'm all geared up, you know, and I do feel a lot better going into the store knowing that I'm protected. Sure. And I mean, I, that's actually part of our, um, our part of our blueprint is we actually have a list of businesses um, that are providing not just the PPE, the masks and the plexiglass and the hand sanitizer, but also the signage that businesses are going to need. Um, right. The retail stores need to put a sign up now per the county that says, you know, here's what we're doing. Here's our checklist. So they're able to provide all that signage, not just for their employees, but for their customers and things like that. Um, I would like to mention, if I may, Maria, that on this blueprint, it's a living document. We keep updating it several times a week as new things change and all of that. But I would encourage any, it's obviously available to all of our chamber members, but any business that is on the peninsula that would like to get a copy of this and get their mm-hmm. sections so that they can begin to use it to start planning, please just reach out to the chamber and we will get that to you because that was really our design, our, one of our goals in doing this was to give all the businesses the tools. So if you're a 
retail store, it's got a page for you that specifically tells you things that you can start to think about and plan for now. So I just want to say any business that wants us, please contact me at the chamber and we will get that to you. We want it to be used. Yeah, and, and I, I would echo, I, I've gone through that plan thoroughly mm -hmm. and, and it has very good mm -hmm. suggestions and, and gets you thinking as a business yeah. owner, what I need to do, what protocols I need to mm -hmm. implement in order for me to open up. And, you know, over the, you, you, we should be looking at all the silver linings in all of this. Yeah, and, right. and, and, you know, and I'm that kind of person. And, and I know, like Eileen said, you, we, we've learned so much over mm -hmm. the last uh, several weeks on, mm -hmm. on how technology can simplify our life. And that's a whole other business in another industry mm -hmm. that, that yeah. has yet to, so much more to tap into. And so, so there, there's a lot of things we, the, the public has learned what mm -hmm. we're hearing and we're seeing and observing is the public understands what they need to do and, and, and to play their part in, in, mm -hmm. um, making sure that they're, they're, they're protecting those that are around them as well as themselves. And we, we know that now, like you, you, you said, Maria, you, you get all geared up when you go to the grocery store. We know that now, and we've, we've got that ingrained in our, in our mindsets. And so it, it's now taking it to that next level. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you both for all of the input, the information, and this is fluid. So we're going to keep doing these shows. We're going to invite the businesses to come on as the reopening to let the community know, Hey, we are here. We're back. We're reopened. Um, also to talk about the adjustments that they've made to make people feel more comfortable when they enter the business. And coming up next, we are going to talk to Reagan Hartman and she's going to tell us how to get a hold of those masks and that hand sanitizer and everything else you're going to need for your business so don't go anywhere we'll be right back well we are back and now joined by reagan hartman reagan i was so impressed when we had a chance to talk the other day i know you work with american solutions for business and if there was ever a time when businesses need solutions right now this is it there are so many things to think about when they're reopening which is the focus of our show today including hand sanitizers, things like that. Tell us about what you do and how you're helping the businesses. Absolutely. You know, before COVID-19 and everything that's been going on, our main focus was, you know, with promotional products, just making customers and employees happy. Well, with all of this going on, we really want to make sure that our businesses are safe. Our employees feel safe coming to work. And our, you know, our guests and our customers feel safe coming to us you know, either in a retail environment or even corporate environment, retail, uh, restaurants rather, everything. We want to make sure that people feel safe and welcome coming to our businesses. So that's really where we've shifted our focus. And, you know, we have a lot of different solutions that we can, you know, we'll discuss over the next, you know, several minutes, you know, to see how we can make people feel welcome and safe to reopen our businesses and keep everyone open. And one of those things, obviously, are masks. And we talked mm -hmm. about, you know, how personalizing masks, putting the logo on. How many exactly. businesses are actually willing to do that? Many, quite often, quite honestly. I mean, it's a great way to build trust and brand awareness. Mm -hmm. And it's also a fun way to go, you know, hey, this is who I support. This is a company that I adore. You know, I want to promote them. You know, even if it's the school, you got to think of the schools with school spirit. If we have the kids wearing them and, you know, the booster giving them out, mm -hmm. it brings up that, hey, you're from my school. I know you. You, you had similar interests as me. And it just keeps our community together. I think trust is a huge thing as well. We, we almost didn't really touch on that, but I think that <laughs> when customers feel like I trust this business, I walk in, there's hand sanitizer, I would feel better. Exactly. I mean, that's the whole point of it. We want to make sure that people feel safe, secure, and they trust the businesses that they're going into. You know, I, I feel the same way as you. If I go into a place that has baskets or carts and they don't have wipes, I'm really questioning whether or not I want to stay in that store because they're not valuing my safety, my health, my wellness. Do I want to really support that? And, you know, that's, that's a personal choice that I make. And I know that some others are, you know, and, and people have joked that, you know, the society is turning into a bunch of germaphobes. And I disagree. Yeah. I think people are just becoming more aware 
-hmm. of their own personal hygiene as well as you know the community at large do i really want to touch everything and maybe not <laughs> especially not right now or even just a standard cold and flu season just mm -hmm. thinking post pandemic you know as we approach cold and flu season in the fall which will be here before we know it right. you know we want to continue these things and next year and years to come mm -hmm. i'm not touching every pen and everything that you know as everyone else has touched i'm just not I also noticed the loose site barriers that are going up in many stores that mm -hmm. are actually even up in many of them. And that's something I would not have thought of, but you guys obviously did. Exactly. That is, is something that we also provide as well. You know, it, it is a case by case basis. You know, if it's something that needs to be on a cubicle or if it needs to be on a countertop in a re retail location or checkout at a deli or, you know, it, at the local coffee shop, we want to make sure that both sides are protected during the transaction. So yes, it is, you know, we have different styles of plexiglass, you know, with little slots to put things through, you know, whatever it is that, you know, every business is going to have their own special needs. What are some of the questions that businesses ask you? <laughs> Help and just say, <laughs> what do I need? What do, you know, because this is, you know, and I, I hate that this word is overused, but it is unprecedented times. And, and I really it bothers me to use that word, but it is true. You know, we don't know what we don't know. And, you know, the rules keep changing. CDC keeps saying, you know, this, and then the next day they say this, and then the, and, you know, our government is saying this, and then they change this. And, nobody knows what way is up anymore. And, you know, we actually have a team that is dedicated to making sure that we're following all guidelines. We get all of the certifications that we need, especially when things are being imported. Right. You know, that's a risk that a lot of people are taking. Can you get these things on your own? Absolutely. Should you? Probably not. You know, you've seen, I'm sure you've seen the news where counterfeit uh, masks have been obtained by medical professionals because they were in a bind and they got some because yep. they needed to protect their staff and that's great however they didn't have the right sources they didn't get the right certifications and now they're putting their employees at risk so we actually have a team that are making sure that everything is fda compliant everything imported is has their certifications you know, so it's something, again, it's back to that trust. We want to make sure that you can trust what we are selling, but also you can just trust it for your own personal use. And you want to make sure that everyone is safe. That's the bottom line. That's, that's all that we want to do. You know, today I just saw there was a big scam with the hand sanitizers that was not real sanitizers in the mm -hmm. bottle. It was basically a water with a liquid. And so there you go. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that just puts more people at risk and it, it, you know, tarnishes the trust again. That's right. Well, Reagan, it, this has been so eye opening and I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. And we will put your information up so that people can reach out to you um, and, and get what they need as businesses mm -hmm. are reopening because many are many, many, many more will be reopening and they will need all of these exactly. things. So. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And I would like to thank all of my guests, Ara Amaranian from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, our city manager. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and you, Maria. Eileen Hupp, our CEO from the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. You bring all of us together always, Eileen, and we really <laughs> appreciate that. And again, to all of our businesses out there thank that you. are reopening and planning to reopen, please let us know. We will have you on the show. You can talk about when you're reopening, what changes that you've made mm -hmm. to make all of our residents feel comfortable to come back to your business because we all want to, that's for sure. All right, that will do it for today's show. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.